When you're a student and you're living in your mom's basement, the only thing that you can do is think about what your future is gonna be. I mean, maximize this time. Spend as much time discovering yourself. And the best way to do that is to Hi everyone and welcome back to The Abstract, presented to you by the Western Student Research Conference. The Abstract aims to get undergraduates in Canadian universities interested in pursuing a diverse range of research. The WSRC is a multidisciplinary research conference hosted at Western University, and we encourage all undergraduates to apply. Now, if you are interested in applying, we have now started up round two of our applications up until February 28th of 2021. In this episode, we have a wonderful conversation with Sean Canungo, who is a disruption strategist and an amazing keynote speaker. Forbes named him, and I quote, the best virtual keynote speaker I've ever seen. And his work and interviews have been displayed on The Globe and Mail, The Guardian, and many more. He talks to us about his perspective on a variety of things, from optimizing your life during university to his outlook on business models. We look into his journey on how he got involved in being a disruption strategist, and he provides us with so many insights that students should be aware of, especially during university. Now, if you are presenting at the conference, don't worry, he gives some wonderful tips on engaging others virtually as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy. My name is Janika, and I'm the creative lead for The Abstract. My name is Ashita. I am one of the co-chairs alongside Lev, who couldn't be here today, but we are the co-chairs and both in fourth year, and we are very, very excited for you to join us today. Thank you so much for being here and coming to speak about your journey. Now, you are a globally recognized disruption strategist, but not only that, you are also a captivating keynote speaker. You have earned some amazing achievements, such as being named Avenue Magazine's Top 40 Under 40, and Inc.'s 100 Most Innovative Leadership Speakers. Now, I really want to know, you work with hundreds of organizations to adapt and progress to a modern digital world. So why don't you tell us a bit about how you got started and why you wanted to become an innovator and disruption strategist? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I never thought that I would do this, right? I started, uh, like many of the people, like listening to this podcast, figuring, uh, thinking about, uh, what they're going to do in the future, and I had no, I had no idea what the hell I was going to do. And I think, I think most people listening to this podcast have no idea what the hell they want to do in life. Um, I didn't know, so I, I, you know, I'm East Indian, I'm brown. I, I took the path that every brown person should take, which is you got to be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, or accountant. And I picked the accounting uh, 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 realm because it was safe and it was rational, and somebody would give me a job. That's what I was looking for. So once I got into accounting, I was like, wait a minute, this is not for me. And I was really passionate and, and really excited about getting into consulting, which was actually not a path for me in school. Um, uh, because at that time when I was graduating, consulting wasn't a thing. And now it's a thing. Now you can graduate, you can get into consulting. But, you know, when I got into consulting I, 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 at Deloitte, a uh, big consulting firm and accounting firm, they had this huge consulting arm. And I'm like, I want that. Like, I want to be there. I want to be advising clients on strategy and whatnot. So as soon as I got into, in, into accounting, I started knocking down the doors, trying to get into consulting. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in consulting. And uh, sure enough, a couple years in, I, I was able to break into the doors of consulting and uh, just uh, get into strategy consulting. And I just started to experiment with different things within consulting, helping organizations with strategy, with mobile, with digital. On the side, my friends were creating movies and apps and just getting into the creative realm. And uh, people started to talk, call me the innovation guy because we started to work on crazier and crazier projects. And um, you know that's how I really built my brand, especially within the firm, was to work on really great innovation projects. And that's what I was really excited about, doing things differently, uh, trying new things, uh, whether it was inside my organization or outside. And then uh, since I left the firm a number of years ago, I've been involved in so many different companies and, and, and helping organizations grow and speaking about innovation disruption. So this is a space that I'm completely passionate about. And it's crazy how your career is just like a number of bricks, right? You, you start with something and then you build on that and you build on that and you know it just sort of grow, grows from there. That's super interesting. Um, so what sectors have you worked in thus far? Oh my God. I mean, I, I've worked in every single sector that you can think of, um, whether it's financial services or public sector or manufacturing, CPG, 
oil and gas. Uh, I've worked in every single sector. Uh, for me, the sector that I love the most, that I'm passionate about, is uh, is anything consumer. I love consumer. I love B 2 C. I love consumer behavior, human behavior. Um, uh, and, and I think it's because of you know this this podcast is really about research, and I think um, the best research is is around consumer behavior, and that's what I love. I love understanding human beings and how irrational we are. Nice. I think it's hard to research humans as well. That's why research trials are a lot more complicated when we deal with humans, but definitely very fascinating. Uh, moving on to more of your. Your background as a disruption strategist. Um, how do you come up with the right business model that fits your client's purpose? You know, it's it's um, the, the the idea of this uh, business model is something that I love talking about. To me, uh, incorporating new business models is something. Um, it's always really exciting, and I I think um, traditionally when we think about new business models. Uh, we 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 go back to all the things that have sort of worked within the industry or in a particular industry. I really love looking um, at ideas ac uh, across different industries, across different sectors, uh, remixing, copying um, ideas from other places, and incorporating into that what into what you're doing. I think the best business models come from outside of different industries. So I think that's where we can uh, uh, get inspiration from. You know, innovation is really about ideas coming together, uh, copying, pasting each other. Um, that is really where you get the best innovation. So that it's it's really around inspiration uh, from from other places. Yeah. In your opinion, how do you think organizations have utilized digital technology and how has it changed business for the better or for worse for the future? Yeah. Um, how has digital technology uh, changed businesses? Well, you, you know, the the standard thing to say around digital technology is that it has changed everything. But I, I, I actually think that what technology has done is it has made things more efficient. Uh, it has made things faster. It has made things easier. But I really think that the innovation actually requires, it, it, it's the human beings actually doing the innovation. It's us thinking about new ways of working and, and doing new things. I mean, technology provides us the platform to do things, but it, it really, it, it, innovation to me is about unlocking insights about human behavior. It's about chartering waters that we've never chartered before. And technology can get us uh, so far. So although I love digital technology and I love incorporating new technologies, I don't believe that it equals innovation. A lot of people think that innovation equals technology, and I, I, I don't believe that. I think it's, it's really about thinking differently and applying different lenses to things. And that's what I'm really excited about in terms of uh, new companies or, or, or uh, new organizations coming up is that they're thinking different. It's not just about the technology, they're thinking differently. And to be honest with you, the punchline is, is that, listen, technology is becoming a lot more of a commodity now. Like technology is not even a differentiator. Uh, really what makes uh, a bigger difference is having a better business model, a better customer experience, a better process. Uh, technology is like, is becoming a, increasingly a commodity. And how innovation and the commodity of, of technology can just change just the whole business idea for, for everyone. Speaking of disruption right now with the pandemic, how did you change your outlook on your business models to fit the pandemic? Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think much has changed in terms of business models in terms of pandemic. I think what it has really just accelerated is, is um, you know, for the most part with many organizations, what it's, it's just accelerated their digital efforts, right? More and more people are doubling down on on digital, obviously with remote work and, and, um, and you know, for, for those organizations that weren't set up for, for example, e-commerce, obviously, you know, people are doubling, doubling down on e-commerce. And, and um, you know, I, I think that, that has been the biggest change since the pandemic. Um, but I also want to warn people when it comes to the pandemic is that I, I actually think that there's, um, the world is not set up for the pandemic. The, the, like the fact that everybody's working from home, the fact that we're doing this on Zoom or Skype, like this sucks. To be honest. I, mean, I, I mean, this is awesome. I love connecting with you. But, but to be honest with you, I'd love to connect with you in person a, and, um, and the energy that we have together. And here's the punchline when it comes to innovation is that innovation is hard enough. Uh, it requires people and energy to, 
and collisions. It requires the, the ideas of people to come together, to collide, to create momentum and to create energy. And although this is fun, we're in this theater and you guys are here and I'm looking at you and you guys are great. And you're both wearing red shirts. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's great. But to be honest with you, it sucks too. And I hope that when we get back to, when we get this vaccine, we can get back to colliding with one another. And, I, and I'm worried for all these organizations that have per created permanent work from home strategies that they're like, they're, 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 gonna, they're gonna have an innovation gap because they're not gonna be able to have those collisions. But I, you know, I wanna know from you guys because you, you know, you're, you're talking with students, university folks, like don't people wanna come out of university and work for a job where like, they're in the office and they're like collaborating with people and they're meeting people? Listen, one third of people meet their significant others through work. Uh, and like, are, don't, don't people want to go to a place and work and not work from their sh shitty uh, 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 homes and their parents' basements? Like, what do you think? Yeah, no, of course. I think everybody is just kind of itching to get back to campus, get back into um, in-person environments because I personally work with first-year students and the the transition into university is hard enough, and now they're on this, in this online space. They aren't able to make friends as easily. Like their only friend is me, and I'm technically a worker of the university, and that's that's not how I want it to be. Like, of course, I'm an upper year student helping out, but um, I think they're definitely missing out on a few few key moments that every first year university or uh, just a freshman gets to feel. And that's not only for freshmen, but I think all university students are. I'm missing those in-person moments, whether it be educational-wise or um, socially. I think we're all missing it. But hopefully, hopefully in the future, at some point, we'll be able to come back and um, safely get back to, like, the energy. Because I think the energy is very important. And it, it, there's definitely a gap between the screen. Um, there's this, this barrier where it's it's harder to get across uh, how excited you have to put in the extra effort. And Absolutely. make that extra step to make sure everyone feels the way yeah and how sure. are you guys both wearing red how did that happen <laughs> it just happened we, we didn't plan it <laughs> we did it yeah, so, it's just a red day just yeah i guess so right yeah <laughs> we're just so in sync yeah <laughs> but um adding on to what ishida said i personally like to be in a lab where i can do more hands-on learning so this i know a lot of people have been experiencing this feeling as well not just you know upper years first years as well as ishida mentioned so i think that this pandemic allowed us to explore different opportunities virtually so um, I think there are some good and some bad. In terms of students, what is an advice for people, specifically students struggling with adaptability, especially during the pandemic? Because I know you focus your work on yeah. adaptability. I mean, in terms of students, I think, um, you know, developing a mindset around adaptability obviously is very important. I think, you know, as a student reaching out to the people around you, uh, exploring new ways of doing things and just starting, right? Just experimenting with, uh, with, with new organizations, new clubs, developing new skills, like go on like Coursera or Udemy and learn something new. Um, just ex I think the, the, being a student is the greatest period in the world uh, because you have so much more time to understand yourself. You know, when you're my age, and you're old and weathered and you have two kids and you got a mortgage and you got to you, you like worry about who to feed and your employees, you know, you just don't have time. When you're a student and you're living in your mom's basement, the only thing that you can do is think about what your future is gonna be. I mean, maximize this time, spend as much time discovering yourself and the best way to do that is to try new things and, and, and try to develop a learning or adapted, uh, adaptable mindset. Um, uh, I think that is the, that is the uh, bullet, that's how you're gonna become a bulletproof professional is, is, uh, by, is by developing that mindset. So go off and, and try that. Um, it's the best period. Don't forget, you know, people say, well, when you're older, you know, they, 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 the guy at Kentucky Fried Chicken started when he was 60 years old. Okay. I mean, that's an anomaly. Most people should be like thinking about their future in university and, and trying new things and pushing themselves. Um, I've watched some of your presentations and, and they're very, very captivating. So what are some tips you have for effective and engaging presentations virtually? 
Yeah, you know, I think virtually is a, is a different beast than in person. I think uh, you, you have to think about virtual as a television show as opposed to an in-person event. So uh, storytelling, uh, graphics, a lot of Q&A and polling, a lot of engagement with your, with your audience. Uh, being, you know, the, the beauty is, is that especially students, like now is the time to get comfortable with a camera, right? Looking down the barrel of a camera is a very uncomfortable thing. And if you are 60 plus and you've never done that, it is, it is like, it is, un, un, it's like unnerving, right? So get out your phone uh, and like make a TikTok t today, uh, do it like a, a WAP dance, whatever you need to do. Uh, get out your camera and, and, and get comfortable with the camera because this is the new way that we're going to be uh, 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 communicating and video is so important. So that, that's what I would say to that. Um, I really appreciate you having me on this podcast. You guys are doing uh, such a great job. I can't wait for all the guests. I can't wait to listen to it. Um, and, and, and if you've gone this far in the podcast, I want you to do a, me a big favor. I want you to subscribe to this podcast, give them a rating, a review, because we need this podcast to beat Joe Rogan in the, in, in the rankings, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And where can our listeners find you? Yeah, you, you guys can find me anywhere and everywhere on every social media platform, TikTok included, at Sean Canungo, Twitter, Insta. Uh, LinkedIn is the best place. So if you're listening to this podcast, connect with me on LinkedIn. I will send you a message within 48 hours. If I don't, then I'm a terrible human being. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and, and uh, looking forward to your message. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank for being you on so the much. Thank you, guys.